Hallelujah. The title today is, You Are Not of This World. I believe one of the keys of living victoriously as a Christian right now on this earth is that you understand you are not of this world. Now, according to the word of God, you are not of this world any more than Jesus was of this world. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 18, if the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. And in John 15, 19, the world would love you as one of its own if you belong to it. But you are no longer part of the world. I chose you to come out of the world so it hates you. Then in verse 14, chapter 17, I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of this world, just as I am not of the world. Okay, yes, you live in this world, in a natural physical body, but your spirit man is not of this world. Okay? Now you know that as men and women, we have a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. That's what First Thessalonians chapter 5 Verse 23 tells us, therefore, the real you is the spirit man living on the inside of you. That's the real you, not your physical body. Amen? Now, we need to be conscious of the fact that we are spirit, soul, and body, and that we are not of this world. We're here now, but we belong somewhere else. Otherwise, we could very easily slip into this world's way of thinking and talking. Now, so much of the time, people think in line with the world, and they go along with unbelief and negativity. That's why they're always talking about their problems, troubles, impossibilities. But we shouldn't be getting caught up in the world's way of thinking and talking, because we're not of this world. We are of God, according to John 15, verse 19, and 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Okay? Therefore, we can think and should in line with God's word, and we can say what God's word says. Now, for example, God said in, in his word that he has redeemed us. He said in his word that he has healed us. And he said in his word he would bless and prosper us. So that's what we should believe and say. Amen? Then, as we understand and act on the fact that we're not of this world, we can begin to walk in the light of our redemption and experience healing, blessing, prosperity. That's what God wants. We're not talking about greed. All right? Now, the church was not born to be weak and anemic or spiritless. Now, let's look back 2,000 years ago to the birth of the church. It took the church only 200 years after Jesus Christ died on that cross to influence the known entire world at that time with Christianity. Now, think of it. This early church was not born by orators with fancy preaching of the gospel, nor was the early church born through manipulation of people. It was born in demonstration of power, the dunamis power of God. Now, when the 120 came out of the upper room, they were amazed because of that power. They were told to be there, and they were obedient, and they were in filled with God's spirit and power, right? Now, the religious leaders, devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem at that time were confounded and they were amazed that these unlearned men and women were praising and magnifying God in languages which were completely foreign to them. Now, remember, these Jewish leaders, they were devout men. They knew scriptures, 
and they were faithful in fulfilling the laws which had been handed to them. They marveled as Peter, with the glory of God shining forth from his face, delivered one of the most powerful sermons ever preached. Now, Peter did not deliver a discourse of Jewish history. He did not compose an intellectual essay. No, the powerful things he began to speak was with a very powerful anointing. Now, it was no longer Peter speaking. It was the Holy Spirit of God speaking through him with power and authority. Now, Peter told them of God's promises in the book of Joel being fulfilled. He said this in Acts 2, 15, verse 16, For these are not drunken as you suppose, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And that was because the power of God was manifesting on them. It was obvious. Okay? Now, this was the beginning of the outpouring of God's promise, promises that he would send in the last days. This was the promise of the Father. It was the power from on high which descended upon them that day. This was the day God chose to give to the church power to fulfill the great commission that Jesus gave them before he ascended to heaven. This same power was so evident in the early church, it's still in the world today. But we need to see that power. We need to believe in that power. You have the Holy Spirit. It has not been removed. The presence and the power of the, from the church, it's still there. If only the church will begin to believe it and commit to it. Now, many Christians have hindered that flow of that power. But not, why? You say, how? Why? Well, they're not yielding their hearts and lives to him. That's a problem. Now, remember, God is telling us we're not of this world. And our power is not of this world. Our power comes from God on high. Now, when Jesus told his disciples in Luke, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry, wait in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Now notice this. Jesus did not tell his disciples to wait in Jerusalem until he received the power from somewhere upon the earth. He said, wait until you are endued with power from on high. Now, the disciples received power from another world, from God's kingdom. Jesus said that after this power had come upon believers, they would be different. They would be changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, in Acts 1 8, it says, But you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, after the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit power, they became totally different people. They became powerful witnesses for Jesus Christ. Peter, for example, okay? On the night that Jesus was betrayed, Peter denied Jesus three times. But after Peter received power from on high, through the indwelling or the infilling of the Holy Spirit, he became absolutely supernaturally bold. Peter had de denied Jesus just a few days early. But when Peter got hold of that power from on high, the power of the Holy Spirit he preached with great boldness. As a result, 3,000 people were saved. Why? Because Peter was now a man endued with power from the kingdom of God. Peter had received power from on high. Now, if we're born again, just like Peter was, and we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we are also are empowered from on high. Amen? From the kingdom of God. That's where we belong. Our power does not come from this world. It comes from the very throne room of God. 
And thank God, that power flowing from heaven never, ever shuts down. Amen? The word power is the word dunamis. It means miraculous power, ability, might, and strength. You've been filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what God gave you. You need to believe that. Confess that. Act upon it. Now, not only is that word where the word dynamite comes from, but it also is where the word dynamo comes from. Did you know what that dynamo is? The dictionary meaning says an energetic, hardworking, forceful person. That's what you all are. Now, most men know their wives are like that. But why do you, you want your husbands to come like that? Okay? Nobody says amen anymore. Don't say oh me, say oh man. Now, a dynamo keeps going with might, strength, and miraculous power. You see, this world is not our home. Heaven is our home. Okay? But we can be empowered with the power of God so we can walk victoriously through this world and make an impact on this world for God. Now, God gave us power to tread on serpents and scorpions. In other words, he gives us power for the authority over all the power of the enemy. That's Luke 10, 19. Okay? Now, we have the power over our adversary, the devil. That's good news. Now, you'll discover that once you've received the power from on high, you are more powerful than anything the devil can try to use to defeat you. I'm telling you now, if you know the word of God, you've got more power. You find yourself able to overcome every obstacle the devil puts your way. Why? Because your power does not come from this earth. Your power comes from the very throne room of God. The power of the Holy Spirit within you is stronger than the power of the enemy. We have to bring our thinking in line with the thinking of God because God is our creator, he's our savior, he's our deliverer. Amen? And God gave us the Holy Spirit to be our power source as we live on this earth. Now, when you receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, you have then the power of God inside you. He lives in you permanently. Amen? And with that power of God in you, you can overcome every demonic attack, every obstacle, sickness, debt, depression, every disappointment. That's good news. I say, oh, why? No, God's Word says that. So we have to use the word. We have to understand the word. When you do, you'll become powerful, successful. You'll be the head and not the tail. Amen? You can overcome every demonic power. Obstacles, sickness, debt, depression. That, that's every disappointment. That's good. See, you have that power. God's given it to you. Anything the devil throws your way, you can win. So every born again, every spirit believer has that supernatural power of God inside him. It's there all the time. It's released by you, your words. Okay? So every born again spiritual believer should be very happy. Through the Holy Spirit, you can tap into God's power anytime, anywhere, Amen? But what I want you to see is that when you receive the Holy Spirit, the power of God now indwells you. Okay? Therefore, his power is in you all the time. But it has to be released. It doesn't do you any good to keep God's power bottled up on the inside of you. We are supposed to let the power of God flow through us every moment, every hour, every day, 365 days a year. It should always be there. It is there. 
Now, I've said all that today to say this. We are not of the world, so we have a different way of dealing with problems. Our Christian experience on this earth is in a spiritual sense what going through life was in the natural for the children of Israel. The Israelites fought natural enemies that loomed like giants to them. But in this new covenant, it's a better covenant. How many of you know that? Our warfare is not against natural enemies, but against supernatural enemies. Also, they seem to loom as giants, okay? But under the new covenant, our enemy, Satan, has already been defeated by Jesus Christ. We need only to stand our ground in Jesus' victory, declaring God's word, praising God for our triumph in Christ. Amen? Now, God didn't promise you that you wouldn't have spiritual giants, you know, you would encounter in this life, okay? But he did promise that through him you can conquer every spiritual obstacle, everyone. Why? Because he has granted and promised you victory in every circumstance in life through Christ. Therefore, when you come up against problems, begin to attack them one by one. How? By the word of God, by saying things like this. Greater is he who lives in me than he who is in this world. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. By his stripes, I am healed. You should say that every day. I am more than a conqueror through Christ. God always promises me victory in every circumstance. Did you know that? All of my needs are met according to God's riches in glory through Christ Jesus. And we could go on and on, page after page. All the blessings and promises of God. Now, after you stood your ground with the word, you then demonstrate your faith in God's miracle-working power by praising him. As you praise God wholeheartedly in faith, watch the obstacles begin to disappear. In other words, go. No devil, no evil circumstance can stay in your presence when you learn how to praise God sincerely with your whole heart. Amen. Now, unfortunately, many Christians when they come up against a spiritual battle, they cry to God and say, Oh God, why did you let this happen to me? You know. But God hasn't done this to you or to anybody else. God doesn't bring adversity into the lives of his children. He's not the one who causes those bad things to happen to you. John 10 verse 10 tells us, The thief comes to steal and to kill, and to destroy. Jesus came so we might have life and have it more abundantly. See, the Bible also tells us that Satan is our adversary. That's in 1 Peter 5, 8. He's the one that the battle's against. Now, God didn't say we wouldn't have any tests or trials in this life, but he did promise to give you the victory in Christ in every test and every trial. But you have to do as the Israelites were instructed in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. That's good news. You're going to have to believe God's word before you can be established and prosper in this life. All right? So then you'll demonstrate what you believe by praising God in absolute confidence in his word. Faith believes. Faith trusts. Therefore, faith praises. Amen? Now, we should boldly proclaim our faith in God, even though we, we may see obstacles standing in our way, and they do. Don't let that worry you. That's no obstacle to God, is it? Now, demonstrating your confidence in God by praising him even before the problem is gone 
and then stand back, watch what God will do. Problems can't stay in the presence of God's people when they sincerely praise the Lord for his greatness and his faithfulness to his word. When you learn how to truly praise God with absolute trust and confidence from his word, we won't have any problems receiving from him. Okay? Because praise God, he strengthens our faith. That's what praise will do. As you praise God, your faith is being strengthened. And the Bible says, for example, Abraham grew strong and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God. That's Romans 4.20. Of course, the devil, though, he doesn't want you free in faith. He knows he's on the run. He doesn't want us to receive what God has promised us. So the enemy is going to try to build obstacles and put barriers across your paths. Now, you've got to learn to stand against him, even when we're surrounded on every side by what seems like Impossible obstacles. Those barriers are nothing to God. And the power that's in his word, if you learn to use it. Greater is he who is in me than he that's in this world. That's the key you need to know all the time. You cannot fail with the greater one on the inside of you. The loser is always the devil. God's the greater. He's in you. Praise God. Now, your situation may seem to be getting worse and worse. At times it's like that, isn't it? So if you keep on believing, confessing, thanking, praising God, things are going to turn around, and they do. Now, if you are diligent to stand on God's word in faith and give him praise due to his name, for his faithfulness to his promises, the barrier will begin to fall away from you. So, begin to praise God for his wonderful faithfulness to his promises. Praise God because his mercy endures forever. Now listen, singing the high praises of God will lift your spirit and help bring those circumstances into perspective. Amen? High praises of God. With those high praises of God, if you've been baptized in the Spirit, why do you think God baptized you in the Spirit? For you to have the power, the dunamis power of God in your spirit, available for every obstacle you face or help you can give to others. It's already in you. You weren't baptized in the Spirit just to belong to a certain group in a church. That was for all God's people to demonstrate God's power. Otherwise, you're just religious. God didn't invent religion. The devil did. He knew that would bind you up. God brought you faith. Hallelujah. So singing God's praises helps you to focus on him and makes those circumstances kind of diminish in size compared to the greatness of God. Your help comes from God. So you need to look to him, not at what you're going through. Sing God's praises. Lift your eyes. Focus on God, who is more than enough to rescue you. Now, there may be times you will be tempted to doubt what God has promised you. But if you will just stand fast in the promises of God, you know, when the storms of doubt and fear, they do try to attack you. But you praise God in the midst of every test or trial. God will show himself strong on your behalf. That's his promise to you. Now Hebrews 10.23 says, He is faithful who promised. So when the enemy puts up barriers in front of you, overcome them with God's word. One of God's promises to you is, you are more than a conqueror in Christ. Romans 8, 37. Do you feel like a conqueror? Well, you stand tall. You smile. You're happy. You're a winner. God wants you to be winners. You'll find that if you stand on the promises of God, all of a sudden, 
that adversity that's coming against you will go. It just seems to disappear. Now, wherever you are, you can praise the Lord, and it will bring encouragement to your spirit and be a continual source of strength to your life. And that's the truth. Amen? Now, we need it in these days we live in, don't we? Praise is so important to the believer because it provides for you an avenue to help you stay in faith. And to rise above all the negative emotions that would try to bring you down into the arena of doubt, unbelief. And when you're in faith, nothing's impossible to you with God. That's what Luke 137 says. Nothing is impossible. All right? So God doesn't want you to feel you can't have everything in your life. All right? You know, the real desires, godly desires in this life. He wants you to have them. But to succeed in God, you must stay positive in your thinking. But we're supposed to be the winners, the overcomers. We're the children of light, not the darkness. So when you start feeling sorry for yourself, instead of just centering on yourself, find someone to bless who is less fortunate than you are. You'll always be better off than many people. So practice looking at your life in a very positive way rather than in a negative one. When you do, you will learn the secret of praising God, regardless of your outward circumstances. And you will realize the importance a grateful and giving heart is. All right? We don't have to sit around waiting for God to move heaven on our behalf. Already God has given us the power, the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. It's greater than anything we could face in this world. That's what 1 John 4, 4 tells us. That power in you is greater than anything that would come against you. Did you know that? That tells me he expects we're winners. We are to be winners. You can overcome all the devil's obstacles with the power of God. And that power will defeat him every time. I'm not saying we don't go through battles. We do. But we've got to think, we're the winners. The devil is no match for the power of God. The Bible says Satan walks around like a roaring lion. What's he doing? Seeking them he may devour. 1 Peter 5.8. It doesn't say he is a lion. He just acts like one. Therefore, he can't devour you unless you let him. And the devil can't devour you when you release the power of God that's inside you against him, right? 1 Peter 5, 9 says, we are to resist the devil steadfastly. He is persistent, but we could be more persistent. If you'll resist him every time, he will flee from you every time. James 4, 7 tells us that. Don't keep the power of God shut up on the inside of you. Release the power of God to help you in a time of trouble. Then the power of God will set you free. Now, what do you think that is? You need to start speaking God's word in your situations. That's the power breaker. You're released from your mouth. You're talking. Your speech, lining up with the word of God, will give you victory. I'm not saying you won't have a fight. You win. Praise God. So the power of God sets you free. The power of God will heal you if necessary. The power of God will make all the difference in your life. Let God's power move you through, through you. That's what he wants to do. So you can release it in every situation you face. That's what you should be believing. Your confession of faith releases the power of God's word on your behalf. The power of God will work in you and through you. When you do what Romans 4, 17 says, call those things that be not as though they were, and it will bring results. See, I'm sure you've all faced problems. We all do. There'll be some this week. What do you do? Put up with it. 
wish the day would go quickly. I'm not saying physically speak the word and shout it out. But you speak the word. Believe in it for yourself. That word will work for you if you have the faith to trust it. It doesn't mean everything just goes boom. No, sometimes it just goes like that. But it will go. You stay with it and praise God till it does go. Amen? In other words, by confessing your faith, you are tapping into God's power on the inside. The power of the Holy Spirit is what changes you to an overcomer who can overcome every obstacle coming against your life. Things come against us. His power is what causes you to speak the word in faith, saying, I am blessed. God is prospering me. God is my healer. He's my deliverer. Hallelujah. He gives me peace. There's so much you can say. God is prospering you. Now in this world, people are afraid of that now. Don't you fear of the future? Your future is so great, so close, he's even coming back for you. Hallelujah. Now it's the Holy Spirit. His power is what reminds you of that. You are not of this world. You are of God. Choose to let the power of God influence everything you think, say, and do. Okay? Take that power. Come against every evil force that tries to come against you. God says you'll win, if you believe it. Again, you are not of this world. And your source of power is not of this world, is it? Your power comes from the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of you. God deposited it there. Everybody got the same measure. But you see, people don't use it. And if you don't use it, it just lays dormant. It's there ready to go all the time. Every time you take the word of God and speak it and believe it, it begins to work for you. Amen? It's not you changing the problems. It's you believing God's spirit and you speaking God's word will endeavor those things to come to pass you're believing for by faith in line with God's word. And it works. Most people wait till they're in a real desperate spot and then they start trying to act in faith. Faith has to grow in you. You learn to use your faith. You don't wait for a problem. You're ready for a problem. That's what you've got to do. So expect victory in every situation you face. You can sing songs of victory. Through Christ, you possess abundant blessings. We can have victory over poverty, over sickness. Over death, tremendous power over the enemy. So you've got every reason to praise him. Now, just show me a hand. How many of you are baptized in the Spirit? If you're baptized in the Spirit, that's good. Now, do you use it? Do you pray in your car or the situation? I don't mean praying in front of people who don't know what you're talking about. They think you're crazy. You can praise God in the church, but you should praise God as much as you can because it edifies your spirit. That means it builds it up. The life of God is residing in your spirit, not here. We learn the word of God from here, and we speak, and it gets down in our spirit, and then it's there whenever we need it. It's amazing what God can do in situations. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you. Speak that word of God. You know, when you're in the shower, driving your car, you know, alone. It's very important. Praise God.